Hi, it's nice to see all of you. Thank you for coming. I've been told to tell you about my vices tonight. So without further ado, let's look at some stats from my ledger of time well wasted. In high school, I played this game called Achaia. Anyone ever played it before? No, of course not. Uh, <laughs> And I logged a lot of time playing the game. In fact, it was uh, 87 days and uh, eight hours to be specific. And that comes out to something like 2,096 hours, or if we're gonna get that into minutes, it's 90 minutes a day for four years. And I was very productive though, okay? Very productive. So for instance, I, uh, I killed 31,273 denizens, and I built for myself a, a house in a mountain subdivision, which is Actually, the only house I own. So, what's that? <laughs> when I moved on to college, my taste changed. I became more refined, more sophisticated, and I started playing Mario Kart. <laughs> so, my best friend and I, Franklin Hobbs, that's him at his wedding, uh, and me over there. My best friend and I, uh, my best friend Franklin Hobbs was so dedicated as a racer so that we would, we'd play together every single day for two years we would play all 16 courses before we were allowed to think about going to dinner. <laughs> Since 2016, I've walked an extra 1,275 kilometers to catch Pokemon. <laughs> that comes out to one mile a day for two years and at, at 100 calories a mile, that would make your speaker 21 pounds heavier, if not for Pokemon Go. I would be enormous, but instead, I look like this. <laughs> we, as adults, love to complain about how things were different when we were kids. But are kids actually less prepared for socializing than they used to be? And am I um, diminished because of what I did to myself and what I continue to do my, uh, to myself with video games? My older brother James asked me what I was gonna talk about tonight, and so I told him it would be a love story in three parts about the things that I took away from each breakup of uh, video games and the things <laughs> that, uh, that were taken away from me. So, part one. My brothers and I grew up in a family setting that's becoming increasingly more common here in the United States. In fact, you've heard about it a little bit today already um, here at York. It's a multicultural, multi-ethnic family. Uh, I grew up in the middle of the Pacific on a small island with my feet planted squarely in between two popular cultures. And me and my brothers hardly ever noticed how special it was at the time until one day in the third grade, and this is a true story, in the third grade, my friend Dominic McConnus, uh, whose uncle owned the local game trading card shop at Milani Town Center, told me about this thing called Pokemon, like six months before it hit big here in the United States. So it was, it was, it was already big in Japan, but not in the United States. And my little brother and I, little, my little brother's name is Matt, uh, we were obsessed with Pokemon. We watched the television show, we collected the cards. Uh, has anyone ever seen the, the Pokemon movies before? Uh, yeah, I've seen all of the Pokemon movies. And we learned how to identify the Pokemon based on their silhouettes. I, I, can, I can still do it, actually. You want to you see? Yeah. Okay. So, for instance, okay, this is a Jigglypuff, right? All right. This is a Pikachu, and that is a Rapidash. I'm very good at this game. <laughs> very good. What made this game so different from all other games that I'd ever played before was that you had to share. Part of the design of the game is that you have to trade Pokemon with other people, in my case, my little brother, Matt, in order to collect them all. And this totally changed our relationship because suddenly I couldn't yell or throw a fit and find an Ekans in the tall grass. There were things in the game that were unavailable to me unless I asked for them nicely. <laughs> so if Pokemon was this perfectly safe, secure sandbox that rewarded eight-year-olds for making friends in the real world. Uh, my next love affair with video games, um, my next love affair with video games reflected all the challenges of being a teenager. Uh, that's not me as a teenager, that's me with a Venonat. That's me as a teenager. Every photo I have, sure, you can laugh, every photo I have 
is this awkward? I spent days looking for a normal photo of me as a teenager, could not find one. <laughs> so, Akea is this game, as I said before, it's the longest running massive multiplayer online role playing game on the internet. In fact, as of September, it's old enough to buy its own alcohol. And <laughs> the game is uh, like all other RPGs before, it's powered by the storytelling of its players. And so at 16 years old, uh, I had these responsibilities that I'd never had before or since. So for instance, I was the priest of this goddess, and every weekend, no one told me I had to do this, but every weekend I would compose these long, sprawling sermons, and I would deliver them, and people would come and listen to them. Um, I designed this flower that you can still find in the game. If you go to the, the gardens of Cyrene, it's called the Blue Mountain Rose. I swear, I'm not bragging, because who would brag about that? Right? <laughs> Uh, Achaia was a place where I met all sorts of friends uh, who revealed to me the intimate details of their lives. I had sisters and parents and rivals and boyfriends and girlfriends long before I had a real girlfriend. And I had friends whose names in the real world I didn't know and those I did and then the people that I'd never met in the real world before that told me all about their abusive home life or about their disability or they came out to me as gay. I had friends who were 50-year-old housewives, 50-year-old housewives from Alaska and Japan. Uh, fi housewives are the, the, the lifeblood of online games, if you're not aware. That's basically everyone you're playing with on the internet. <laughs> so, becoming a teenager, my needs had changed. It made me think about this idea from psychology called the, the transitional object. So a transitional object is a thing that stands in for a more complex relationship. It teaches you lessons about how to behave and lets you make mistakes before you're ready for the real thing. Uh, I'd never had a sister before, and I didn't talk to my gay friends in high school about their relationships, and I don't know if I could have, but in Achaia, I did. I didn't know what the power of my own words and my own language was until I saw the things I was creating in the gardens of Cyrene blooming. So part three. I've been playing League of Legends since 2012 when I started grad school. And uh, I started because, well, I, I, really, I was really enamored with the game. La last season, I played 900 ranked games, which is about 400 hours of play, not including the games that I play with my friends. My friends like Franklin, so when Franklin and I graduated from college, we moved apart from each other, and he would, every weekend, he would ask me to play with his friends, play League. And I would come up with excuses, because I thought it was awkward, and I didn't want to do it. But after three months or so, I finally decided, okay, I'll do it. And what I realized about the way that Franklin and his friends play League of Legends is that it's basically fishing, without the boat and without the fish. <laughs> They're looking for like an excuse to bond. Um, to go back to a time before we had jobs and before we moved far away from each other. I've noticed that when I play league with students at York, that the, the script is kind of flipped. No longer am I the kid who's uh, seeking out adults on the internet to learn everything that the world has to offer. Suddenly, I'm the housewife. <laughs> <laughs> the kid who hasn't quite grown out of playing video games yet, who's fishing without the boat and without the fish. This is a picture of me enjoying myself playing League of Legends. It's great. Uh, video games for people like me are not about escapism. They're about community. Uh, when you're stuck in a deep, dark cave in Pokemon and you've lost all of your potions, there's one thing you can do to flee to safety. There's an item you can use. Do you know what it's called? Quinlan? Yeah, it's an escape rope. Yeah. So what if video games are our escape rope to meaningful relationships? What if every quest that we complete is one step on the rung into, of that ladder into adulthood? What if every monster that we catch and every race that we finish is one experience that brings us closer to leveling up? Thank you.